assalamu alaikum in today's video i will be going over what exactly moles is and how can we understand the concept of it the reason why moles was created was to basically figure out the perfect amount of reactants that would be needed to create a specific amount of um, a specific amount of products all right so chemists wanted to find the least amount of resources to complete a reaction this is just for efficiency and stuff like that how would we figure that out so they already knew some specific things and that includes the fact that yes for example i have a reaction hcl plus naoh giving us nacl and h2o now this is a very simple reaction and the thing to note here is the fact that we have two particles that are reacting together let's say that this particle is a and this particle is b so these two particles are reacting together to form nacl and h2o how do we figure out the perfect amount of hcl and NaOH so that we get a specific amount of NaCl so we get so that we use up all of it so basically we're trying to figure out the exact amount of HCl and NaOH that would be perfect for the reaction that would completely consume NaOH and HCl both neither of them will be remaining so in order to figure that out I know some specific things I know that yes I need one HCl and I need one NaOH. If we think about it in terms of particles, then that means that I need one particle of HCl and I need one particle of NaOH. So how do I convert this into grams? How do I convert this into a measurable thing? In order for us to convert this, so we can do it like so. So we have figured out that we need one particles of each, right? one particle of HCl and one particle of NaOH. How do we figure out the amount of mass in grams? We can do that by using some specific things. So, we know that these particles' mass is determined by two factors, by proton and neutron number. Basically, it is determined by the atomic mass. So if we try to figure that out, we may be able to find out a specific method. So I have drawn here the particles and their respective masses. This does not represent bonding. This only represents the amount of particles that are there in A and in B. All right. So I have in hydrogen one proton. That means that I have one atomic mass unit. In chlorine, I have 35 atomic mass unit. In sodium, I have 11. And in oxygen, I have 16. And in hydrogen, I have again one atomic mass unit. This is basically saying that the total sum of proton and neutron is this. For hydrogen that, chlorine that, and sodium that, oxygen that. Now, we need to figure out, we need to somehow convert this into mass, right? So, perhaps we can add these two together because this is a single particle. Keep this in mind. This is a single particle. This is moving around in uniform. They, these, they, this is considered one thing. So, let's just add these two together and we get 36 is to ratio 28. So, this basically means that perhaps I can use these values, this ratio to convert it into grams right i can perhaps use this ratio i can perhaps use this 36 to 28 atomic mass unit and convert it into grams the thing that i want you to keep in mind is that i have still kept the understanding my core concept the same this represents one particle of a and this represents one particle of B again from my origin this is the balanced equation that I had this is from my core the same thing except I transformed it into my 
particle mass is the amount of masses that my particles have now proton and neutron have their own respective masses but that is extremely extremely low i don't need to know that amount of x grams all right i don't need to know that amount of mass that one proton or one neutron has i can only i only need the ratio if i know the ratio of hcl to sodium hydroxide or my b particle then i can figure out the amount of mass in grams that i need for a complete reaction so why don't we try 36 grams and 28 grams respectively as you can see the ratio is still the same the ratio is still 36 here and 28 right there this is still the same ratio except that instead of using our atomic masses we have just used grams and the reason why i did not directly convert this into grams is the reason why i know that the ratio would be the same 36 part 36 atomic mass meaning one particle of hcl would react with one particle of sodium hydroxide so this ratio of atomic mass would stay the same so i can use this same ratio to convert it into grams and this is the ratio that i get 36 grams of hcl and 28 grams of sodium hydroxide this is the perfect reaction that i wanted now i have still not mentioned moles a single time in this entire conversation where exactly is moles coming in the place that moles comes in is to replace these values it's to basically use a constant term a single term that is capable of describing it all all right so i know that 36 mr all right 36 mr or for example hcl's one particle a single particle of hcl is equals to 36 grams divided by 36 mr or the molecular mass this represents this ratio represents one moles this is the reason why moles was made in order for us to have a consistency think about it like so for example you're describing it to another scientist that this is how i created x amount of sodium chloride i reacted you know 36 you know the mr of hcl right i used that and i used two times the mass of that in grams and this inconsistency the usage of basically converting mr into mass and then converting it into our units we basically cut it the middleman out and used moles instead so moles basically function in using mr and mass all together at once to describe it as moles so moles one mole right one mole of any substance is equal to the mass of that substance a mole whatever that mole will be is equals to the mass of that substance upon the mr of that substance for example here the mass of hcl was 36 gram and the mr of hcl is 36 as well this gives me one mole now i can say that hey instead of writing these values i can perhaps just simply say one mole of hcl reacted with one mole of naoh to give us the product this is a lot simpler i can understand this by the formula itself as well now you can see one hcl or one mole of hcl perhaps reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide and creates one mole of sodium chloride and one mole of water you can convert this mole back into mass 
if we wish we just need the mr which is quite easy to get we know it is hydrogen that is present and chlorine that is present in the particle a we can convert it into grams once more and that will still give us 36 grams so we are just using the same convention the same ratio but except converting it step by step from atomic mass into mass we use both of them at once to get the moles and this moles helps us understand many things in terms of calculations now this moles has a specific amount of particles so basically moles is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 particles present all right so this is what a single mole is meaning i hope you understand the concept of how we actually derived moles from our ratio of particles and then converting it into mass and simply cutting out this step by step process and just converting it into moles we will be using moles in a lot more detail inshallah in the next couple of videos i will be doing some questions of moles and how easy it is by just knowing this specific formula this formula is the biggest and most important formula of this chapter and it will supplement you furthermore in the upcoming questions so inshallah see you in the next class hope you enjoyed the video and furthermore share it and like as well